assuming the deal gets passed, makes its way through the Senate, what do you think of the outcome for the U.S. and its finances? Well, the outcome on, on the economy is going to be quite modest. I mean, first of all, uh, the, uh, the spending cuts that are carved in stone that you can be pretty sure will actually happen only last through 2025. Uh, all, the, all the budget totals that you've been seeing are between a billion and, and, and a trillion and 1.5 trillion for the 10 year total, you know, that can be undone or changed or remodeled by a future Congress. So I think the, the, what to focus on that's important really now is what happens in the next couple of years. So there's a constraint on spending in, in 2024, fiscal year beginning in October this year, and again in 2025. But the impact on, on GDP growth will probably only be a, a couple of tenths uh, in, in both years. So in, not enormous, really. I mean, it's not trivial. I mean, you know, it's, it's a meaningful amount of money, but it's not really going to fundamentally change the trajectory uh, of the economy. And, and as I said, this is all up for grabs again in January 2025, when uh, the debt ceiling will, will just be set at whatever level it's got to, and then there'll be another fight over whether to raise it again. So it's, it's a fix. Uh, it's not a massive deal from a macro perspective. It clears a big cloud that was hanging over markets for sure. Uh, but um, you know, the, the fundamental problem is that the debt ceiling is a crazy idea in the first place, and we haven't got rid of it. Well, you know, I, that was actually going to be my next question, Ian. I mean, we know that we've sold the issue again short term, kicked the cans out of the road. We're probably going to be having another discussion in, in December of next year and uh, towards the end of 2024. Is it time for the U.S. to think about just abolishing this debt ceiling concept? Is there any way that that can actually happen? Oh, yeah, it can happen. There was a bill, uh, a joint House and Senate bill in the lame duck session after the midterms last year to abolish the debt ceiling altogether. Uh, but it was shot down um, by, the, uh, by the administration and the Democrat leadership in the Senate because I think they took the view that uh, Kevin McCarthy, the House Republican leader, would find it very difficult to pass any sort of debt ceiling bill and they would just enjoy watching him twist in the wind, uh, failing to do anything. But of course, uh, McCarthy did pass a bill which then became the basis for negotiations. And the Democrat strategy of just saying clean debt ceiling raise or nothing was immediately out the window. So I think they read McCarthy wrong. Um, and, and by doing that, they blew an opportunity during that lame duck session to uh, get rid of the debt ceiling altogether. I think that was a huge mistake because they should have learned by now that Republicans will always use the debt ceiling uh, to try and extract um, concessions from Democrats that they wouldn't be able to get under normal circumstances. Uh, and this has happened over and over again now, and yet they didn't take the opportunity uh, to, uh, to get rid of it, thinking that there would be some short-term political gain from it. So I hope they will sit back and reflect that that was a misjudgment. And should the Democrats be holding a majority uh, in the House and Senate again after future elections, I'd like to think that this time around they'd actually get rid of it because it is crazy. It is just uh, you know, voting effectively to pay bills that have already been incurred by Congress. Uh, very few other countries have a debt ceiling and it's just become a political football that I think in truth um, you know, it doesn't really serve any great purpose and, um, and getting rid of it would probably generate some, some nasty headlines for Democrats for a couple of days in the right-wing media, right. but then everyone would forget about it. 